Hey guys, today on the show, Cassie Ho, Blogilates founder and creator. We're so excited to have you today. We're talking all about how she built her empire, how she dealt with toxicity within her own company. What else? Um, what else? My 90 day journey, mm-hmm. um, body positivity, toxicity, all of it. And all my family. And her family and a lot of the similarities that we have together in our journeys, plus how you can start your fitness journey and succeed all that and more. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to better together. When you know better, you get better. That's what we do here every single day. Glad to be back with you here uh, in this last week of January. Our quote of the day, every day you should strive for progress, not perfection. Thank you, Cassie Ho, our guest today. I'm so excited. She is the founder of Blogilates, and she is going to teach us today how to build both body and mental confidence and how to find joy in working out. I'm very excited. I'm finding joy in working out lately. Oh, I love that. Just a little something, something, nothing too much. <laughs> 15 minutes. Feels yeah. good. Get a quick little sweat, and I'm good. I like that. Yeah. Not not too much. That's key. Mm-hmm. Not too much. Don't overdo it. Well, push we, yourself too hard. <laughs> we talk about this when you try to overcommit. It's just hard to deliver. Yeah. So I always say baby steps. I talk about that in my books. Baby steps till something gets easy, right? And then when it gets easy, then you can upgrade. Then you can add more. Um, and especially anytime you're trying to like lose weight. Um, I watch people, it's like, okay, I got to do the, the new food plan. I got to do all this food shopping. I got to do all this pre-cooking and then I got to get a gym membership and then I got to go to the gym. I can make it easy for you. <laughs> Just eat less. Eat less of the bad stuff, more of the good stuff. And then when that gets easy, take it to the next level, right? Once you start seeing results, it's like me. I started just eating a little less and eating a little less of the bad stuff. And eventually I woke up and I lost 20 pounds because I wasn't keeping count. I wasn't keeping score. I just was eating a little bit less. Instead of having the full bacon, egg and cheese bagel sandwich, I would pop off a little bit of the bagel and throw it away. And then I would eat a smidge of it open-faced, you know, like the the open-faced sandwiches. And then when that got easy, I took a little bit more of the bagel off. And then that got easy. I did, instead of seven slices of pizza, I did six slices of pizza. When that got easy, I went down to five. When I ended up getting down to like two, I was still hungry, so I threw in a salad. Less of the bad, add more of the good. You know, you don't have to do everything all at once because that's why people have such a hard time. So then when I lost the first 20 pounds, I was like, damn, this actually can happen? That's when I went to the gym. And I added that in because now I had the motivation and the excitement to go do the gym. So you have to baby step things. Nothing is easy, especially in modern times. We're just so busy. There's so much on our minds and our hearts and our heads. It's too hard to do it all. So you got to just baby step it. I think we're also so used to instant gratification, you know, it's like, that's where baby steps are key. I know, especially for my generation who we've gotten with our phones, everything's like, bing, 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 bing. It doesn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like, we overdo it thinking like, okay, I worked out really hard today. Next day. Why am I not Mm -hmm. feeling the way I want to feel or looking the way I want to look? And it's like, it doesn't happen that way. So it's the baby steps, like you said, that you can be continuous with and you can actually commit Mm -hmm. to that are going to be boom, long-term success. Better choices. What do I end the show with? Make good choices. So just better choices over a long period of time Mm -hmm. will yield results. Um, And, you know, the other thing I found when I was dieting and trying to lose weight too was I would go to the gym, work out really hard, and then I was hungrier and I was more tired and I wanted to eat more. And then I was like, oh, I I did really good. I could have this. What? That doesn't work. So, and a lot of people do that. So it's better to just, I don't even go to the gym for a while. If I was, if I was somebody's like health coach right now, I'd be like, just eat less Mm -hmm. and start incorporating more good and start removing little by little the bad. Don't cold turkey it. Just, and then if you have a bad day, get up the next day and start again. That's it. But it's, it's too hard to try to do it all. And so I, I really like that. And I will tell you, my little 
foray into trying to be more active. So my words for the year were active, create, create and build. And I'm working on all of those. So Candace Kumai shared her cookbooks with me. And so when I had COVID, I was texting her pictures. I'm like, this is me going through your cookbook, deciding what I'm going to start making. And I have pre-batched her. They're like egg burritos with um, mushroom, avocado, and cheese. And they're like flour tortillas. Pre-batch them. They're all in the fridge. In the morning, I grab and go. Well, I got to melt the cheese a little, but that's it. (laughs) And they're friggin' delicious. Made her Brussels sprouts with walnuts and like goat cheese. I don't even like goat cheese, but I was like, oh, I need different things in my body, different nutrients. I always call them like different minerals, vitamins, bacteria, whatever. So great. Her cookbook's awesome. It's been really fun. Was that the, is it like the green, green plate one or something like that? Uh, we'll have to, I'll look it up and link it. Cause I think it is. Cause she has two. Yeah. It's pretty. I don't remember. It now. is really pretty. I think, I think <laughs> I it gave is. you one yeah. and then I kept the other. Yeah. So it's the other. It's the other one. Okay. <laughs> we'll link it for you guys. One for me, one for you. Perfect. We um, can swap recipes. Yeah. So I think, um, I think this is going to be really great for everybody because Cassie, I met Cassie, Ho, our guest today, I met on a Live with Kelly and Ryan segment. So I was filling in for Kelly Rippa over the summer and we did a whole fits, fit, 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 fitspo, right? Fit, fitspiration, fit, fitspiration week. It was like something like yeah, that. Yeah. It was so cute. <laughs> and there were different fitness people that came in and Cassie's just so great, so bright, so happy and positive. And her workouts, guys, are killer. Like you can just tell if you are actually really disciplined and do them, (laughs) that you're going to look amazing and you don't need equipment. Um, you know, it's like Pilates, it's like your, your own body weight. So I remember I would go back when I was in Connecticut, I would go back to the Instagram post that live with Kelly posted so that I could just keep redoing her workout. And then it just got so far away in the feed. It took too long to get back. I'm so bad with like YouTube and everything. I don't know how to save things. Do you know how to save things? I know how to save them on Instagram, but not on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, I could have saved it on Instagram and then just go into my archive basically. Boom. Yep. Go into your saved. Damn. We can still do it. Yeah, maybe I'll have to do that because there was this one Lego workout she did with me where I was like, oh my God, this sucks so bad in a good way (laughs) that um, I'm going to be like so ready for swimsuits in the summer. So um, she's incredible, but she's got such a great story and uh, and she's such a go-getter and she's just killing it right now. Um, with her, with everything. She's a social media fitness uh, entrepreneur. She's a coach influencer who advocates for finding joy in working out, like we talked about earlier. She's helped millions through her YouTube channel and website, Blogilates. Many have said that, especially through quarantine, that she was their fitness and mental savior. She's a really good friend now, um, and incredibly inspiring woman. I'm so excited for you guys to hear from Cassie. We're going to talk about dealing with toxicity, her journey, rediscovering how she was, how, who she was also how she got to this place, right? You always want to know what was the kind of pivotal moment where, where did she say yes, where the rest of us may say no. Um, so I, I want to talk about that. She's dealt with some body image issues and uh, and how she's building this incredible line with Target, by the way, after a really, really big moment with Target where she got them, not got them, they had to apologize to her. Yes, Miss Research, it was in the research. You're like, oh, really? I really don't Read remember. Read your own research, I read, lady. I'm like, I don't remember reading that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, there was a moment where something happened. They had to apologize. And now years later, they're carrying her line and it's crushing. They can't keep it on the shelves. Bunny ears. Bunny ears. Damn. All right. Let's uh, take a quick break. When we come back, we will have Cassie help. So, Cassie. Okay. We have so much to go over. Okay. (laughs) We do. (laughs) Like, you have such a great, like, story. And I'm so inspired every time I see one of your posts come up because I really love how you've tackled social media and how you tell your story through it. And it's so authentic. 
It looks so fucking time consuming. Oh my God. Oh, all, all the content <laughs> making. <laughs> I'm like, how does she do it? How does she sit and write every one of these and make it so amazing? Um, well, the, the writing of the captions that comes from my love of blogging and, you know, so for me, it's actually therapy mm -hmm. because it allows me to comb through my feelings. And that's why my captions are always like so long. But the interesting thing with my followers is that they're actually more interested in the caption than they are in the photo or the video. It's, it's really interesting. Cause you're so good at it. That's the thing. You're captivating, you're telling a story, you're being raw and vulnerable and honest. It's, um, it's really fantastic. And I think it's, obviously only helping you as you build out your brands and, you know, your, your blog brand and, um, this wonderful pop flex, <laughs> which explain to everybody the difference. blog okay. is the, the fitness. So we're still trying to figure out the difference okay. <laughs> in terms of like product, but the difference is that Cassie Ho is blog -ilates. That's like my online persona. That's my YouTube channel. That's my Instagram name, all of that. It's more of like the content side, um, the person side. And then PopFlex is the product side. However, ever since blog -ilates got into Target, now it's also the product side. So we're trying to figure out how to distinguish between the two. Mm. But it seems like uh, blog -ilates, the brand, is going to be the more approachable one, the one that you can uh, you know, afford, get at the store. And so, yeah, we're still trying to figure it out, but both are supposed to be really pretty and motivational and, you know, help you find more color and beauty in your life with fitness. You're so funny. Again, honest. You're like, we're figuring it out. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, like shit, we, this just took off and uh, I don't know what to do now. I know because, <laughs> how, because it's like, well, I love <laughs> gold. I love pretty. Like mm -hmm. how, how can I distinguish if I just want gold and pretty in both places? So I, know. I yeah, love gold and pretty. Yeah, I, I just redid my bathroom in Connecticut. It's gold and pretty. Exactly. You know what Ugh. I want? I want a gold faucet in my kitchen so bad. Yes, I know. I'm so excited because, um, I, you know, what I love about what you've done is sometimes you're like, well, why do you need more workout stuff? Why do you need more? It's out there. Right. And that's the thing that would intimidate me for wanting to enter into any kind of space, but you've taken your own spin on it. And it's like, I, I freaking have to have this stuff. I love it. Your water jug you're using right now is next to my bed every <laughs> night. It's massive. It's perfect. I don't have to refill it that often. Uh -huh. It's just for my nighttime drinking Uh huh. and help me through COVID. Thank you. Because I had to stay very hydrated. Mm. And uh, you know, when you're not feeling well, you don't want to be getting up a million times to fill it. Nope. Um, and your workout gear, I'm wearing your sweatshirt right now because I want to like show my support, but it's the cutest sweatshirt. And I took it on my travels to Italy. I, I think saw, you saw. Yeah. I saw. Thank <laughs> you. And we're so matching right now. We are. I and live Kelsey in this. Kelsey just bought that one. That's I the butter saw, one, right? Well, uh, Is it called butter I forget. Is it called cream? I don't even know don't anymore. Cream. It's called cream. cream. It's called cream. Okay. I think you called it butter. I don't know. Butter cream. stuck in my head. Oh, okay. Maybe because <laughs> it was like, a, it's like a butter yellow. Kelsey, yeah, kind of. Kelsey yeah. wears it every day. I do. I love that. We need to get you every color. Yes. Sign me up. But yeah, it's... Uh, it's cool because you have put your spin on it, but you're also, you're, you're doing kind of what Bethany Frankel did, whether you know it or not. Do you know Bethany Frankel? I do know, but okay. I, I have not studied, studied her. her. So she, she did that with her audience. She uh -huh. really brought them in into the building of Skinny Girl mm. and then people feel ownership over it. And then what you did during quarantine with all your videos and stuff is, you know, people are saying that you were their mental and like physical savior, <laughs> you know, you were providing a really important service for people because when you're working out, it really is your mental health too. It's not just your physical health. Totally. You know, you're releasing endorphins. You're feeling so much better about yourself with every movement that you make. Um, my cousin had said something years ago to my husband. He said, find me someone who has ever regretted working out afterwards doesn't exist. No, it doesn't. No one ever says, I wish I didn't do that ever. No, because you feel so good afterwards. Yeah. Even if you're sore and you're exhausted, you feel like you accomplished something mm -hmm. for yourself. Yeah. Which by the way, just get an Epsom salt bath people. It helps. It really <laughs> does. But it's like the conversations to get you into the gym. Like yeah. I have so many conversations with myself. I'm like, do I want to get up? No, I don't want to get up. Should I? Yeah, but I should. I feel good. Oh, it'll only be a few minutes. And the negotiations are endless. Oh, that, that's why you just got to like count to three and just like, okay, let's just go. Let's just go. Yeah. And then by the end of it, you'll feel good. 
But then I'm like, oh, I'm going to be cold. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Excuses can go on for days. They really can. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit, um, for anybody who's listening that doesn't know your journey, tell us a little bit about your journey, how you got here, how you got started. Um, because I know that there was a, a switch at one point. You went to my hometown, you were doing one thing, and then whoop, things started yeah. changing. Oh my gosh. I always get this. It, so the story is super windy. I'm going to do my best, but basically I went to school for biology because my parents, you know, I'm coming from an Asian American background. Um, they're Vietnamese immigrants. I could only have three choices. It was to either be a doctor or lawyer or a failure. And as much as I told my dad, I want to be a fashion designer. I mean, I've been sketching ever since I was six years old. I kept this huge sketchbook. They were like, no, 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 you're not going to make it. You're going to be so poor. You're not going to have any friends. Like, don't ever bring this up again. And so I went to school for bio and I was supposed to go um, apply for med school. (coughs) And it was the last class I needed before taking the MCATs was organic chemistry. And my heart was just so not in this whole process. I could not see myself becoming a doctor or loving it and all this stuff. And so I actually dropped out of organic chemistry as a sabotage to my path. Um, and it really upset my parents because they weren't listening to me. I told them I want to go to design school. I want to do this. And, um, I was just, I I dropped out. And at that point, um, I also started designing a yoga bag because I was teaching Pilates on the side. And I noticed that I didn't have anything that was cute that could carry my yoga mat, my water bottle, my towel, my uh, CDs at that point. And so I made a really cute one with a bow and gold chains. I mean, I've always been into the gold. And then I brought it to class and my students were like, what's that? We want one. And so that started um, the beginning of the fitness and fashion part of my life. And let's see, around that same time too, I also started a YouTube channel in 2009 when I graduated and it was for my real life students in LA because I was moving cross country for my first big girl job after school and um, it was supposed to be for 40 people. And then the next time I looked at that 10 minute Pilates video, there were thousands of views, hundreds of comments. And so that initial desire to stay in contact with my students is what still drives the channel today. And I think why everything just, I don't know, it works because right now I think a lot of people are heading into social media because, oh wow, there's um, money making opportunities. You can get famous, like all this stuff. And like my intentions were different. And I think anyone's intentions were different back then. We just wanted to share because we wanted to connect with people. Mm -hmm. And so I really think that is what allowed the growth of Blogilates over the past decade. I mean, I started in 2009, it's 2022 now. I can't believe people are still doing roll-ups with me. (laughs) But um, along this whole process, I was able to grow um, my merchandise and get to my design dream because of the following that I grew. And then just in 20, was it 2020, 2021, um, we launched at Target with the Blogilates brand. But before that, I mean, several years of practice with my own brand, uh, pop flex for the clothing and things like that. So anyway, I, that was kind of windy, but pretty much that's, that's how it happened. So there was an interesting thing, uh, in your journey that I wanted to ask you about because, so actually before I get to that, um, and I'm going to write it down because I don't want to forget when you made your first yoga bag, Mm -hmm. what happened? What happened? Yeah. Um, did people buy it? What happened? Did you just, did it pitter out? What So what happened was Sam and I made a, so Sam is my husband. husband. (laughs) Then he was my boyfriend. He was also my finance tutor. That's how we met. And um, we made a teeny little website and we took like what we thought were professional pictures of the bags on our digital camera and we put it online. And um, I remember our first sale was a woman named Lindsay Anvik from New York City. And we're like, oh my gosh, how did she even find out about this? How does she even think we're legit? The bag was like $125. I mean, it wasn't cheap. It was like this pleather yoga bag with a huge bow on it. And we Facebook friended her because every customer to us was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. So that's actually what happened with our first bag. And then um, I remember sending out like three bags to magazines, like shape, sell, fitness, and just like praying because each bag to me was like gold. Mm-hmm. Now at this time I had flown out to Boston for my first job. I was trying to become a fashion buyer. And I remember sitting at my desk, super miserable. My sister sent me a text and she's like, is that your bag in a magazine? And I was like, 
wait, what? So I took an early lunch break. I drove out to Target. See, Target's always a part of this story. Yeah. And then I was flipping through Shape Magazine and couldn't find it the first time. Then I did it slowly. The second time I saw my little bag in this magazine, I just like melted on the floor and started crying. And I basically quit my job um, a week later, bought a ticket to China on Friday, flew out on Sunday. And I was like, I'm going to go big. I'm going to find a manufacturer because this is my sign. If I don't take this chance, I'll never know. And I'd rather fail than not know. And so that's what happened. I have the chills all the way down my body. Okay. And then what? And then, um, you go to China I, I went a to week China. friggin' later. Talk about a yeah. winner. She's like, yep, going now. Going now. Well, so I went out there. I went to the Canton fair to try to find manufacturer. I knew nothing. And yes, like I'm Chinese, uh, Vietnamese, but I don't know how to speak Chinese at all. So I hired a translator. I mean, it was a whole situation. Anyway, I found a manufacturer, flew back to Boston. And at this point, um, Sad times because Sam and I just broke up and he flew back home to LA and I had no job. So no money, um, no boyfriend, and now an apartment that I had to figure out how to pay for. So I actually started teaching Pilates 12 times a week to make ends meet. But Talk about the worst thing happening being the best thing because that pushed you into Pilates. Yes. It pushed me to become the best Pilates instructor I could ever be because it forced me to train myself, train, um, understanding students and really all that weird, like space between classes. Cause you only teach like at in the morning, in the afternoon or at noon and at night. Right. So you have like these weird pockets of hours. I would just film more YouTube videos and blog more. So it was the perfect training ground for what I'm doing today. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then from there, <laughs> and then you did your there, YouTube and that started popping. Yeah. So that started popping. Some um, bigger YouTubers were like saying, oh, I found this channel called Blog a lot. He's like, I'm using it. I lost some weight and whatever. And like, it's always been a slow, organic growth. Um, and now we're at like almost 6 million subscribers all together, like uh, almost, almost 2 billion views. Like it's crazy. But have you um, ever yeah. been um told that you should move from YouTube and do a subscriber channel where you charge people? Um probably, but here's yeah, you know, I I have. But for me it's always about sharing this information, sharing the classes, because at the end of the day, I mean, it's kind of like the marketing, right? For my products. So yeah. why would I do that? I mean like yes, we have some uh, programs behind a paywall because that's a program for like weight loss or like um, getting healthy weight or whatever, a meal plan. So that's different. But in terms of like workouts, I want it to be accessible and approachable to anyone because that's how I started my journey with Pilates. I remember um, I was 16 at home. I was watching an infomercial, Mari Windsor Pilates. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. I want to do that. These ladies look so awesome. Begged my parents to buy it for me. And every night I would religiously do Pilates in my bedroom. And it's so cool to see like girls who are like my age back then now in their bedrooms doing my Pilates videos. So I, I, I just... I just want it to be approachable for everybody. So cool. So the thing I was going to say earlier, and this is what I was teasing with the girls, um, was, and if I have this wrong, please tell me, but there was a moment where your, something was being advertised and they, they edited the photo and made a thigh gap. Yeah. Tell that story, please. (laughs) So this is Target again. (laughs) So basically I was browsing the website and I noticed that, uh, this one model, it was a bikini bottom shot. There was a literal square in her crotch. Like, and was like this a, a bikini you had made or what no, was No, 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 no. This was a Target bikini. There was just selling a bikini bottom for like nineteen ninety nine or whatever. Okay, and I was shopping it. and I was like, that's weird. So then I did a whole blog post about like, oh, look, like people are trying to make, uh, people think thigh gaps are so gorgeous that you have to, here is proof that someone's literally Photoshopping a thigh gap onto a professional model. Um, but somehow they did it poorly. And I don't know if that was like some employee who was mad at Target being like, haha, here we go. This is my last job I'll ever do for you guys. Or if they like literally were just a terrible Photoshop artist or something. But that started a worldwide conversation about body positivity, body dysmorphia. And I remember like my blog post being shared like everywhere at that time, because it was the first time we had like caught someone in the act because Photoshopping is usually done really sleekly, right? You can't even tell, Mm -hmm. but here was evidence that, Hey, no, someone's actually trying to put a thigh gap on a model. And then, 
And then what? What? Do you Target mean? had to apologize. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love yeah. this part of the story. They apologized. <laughs> I would say that as I'm building my brand and I'm thinking, oh, Target would be a great place, I would be scared <laughs> because here I was like whistleblowing in a sense this this moment. And this is what I love about the brand mm-hmm. is they that's not something that they held on to, mm. right? No, they've done a really good job of like showing diversity, inclusivity in terms of body shapes and sizes. So, I mean, look, they're like a corporation with like thousands and thousands of, of employees one person is going to make a mistake or do something stupid like that. Yep. And, you know, so we got to learn and move on. Exactly. But also if you're going to be called out for something, then own up to it and do and better. And they did. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. It's such a different time. It it's really such is. Such a different <laughs> time. That would not have gone on years ago when I was doing stuff. Like it's, it's just a different time. Such a different time. So <laughs> it's good though. It's really good. Um, you know, you obviously had had to kind of go against your parents' wishes, and I know that couldn't have been easy. Mm-hmm. How did you navigate that once you kind of did it? Did you tell them initially? Did you have to fib for a little while? Like, Yeah, it was really, really hard. And honestly, I had a lot of dark thoughts during college because I was like, if I can't make my parents happy and I can't make myself happy, what is the point of even living? Like it got there. Um, and I think for a lot of people, you hit your rebellion phase in your like preteens or whatever, but because I'm, I was taught to be so obedient Mm -hmm. that I guess my (laughs) rebellion came out later in life. And I had tried to explain to my parents this time, I want to go to a different school, want to study design and they weren't listening. So that's why I had to sabotage my own timeline by dropping out of organic chemistry. And at this time I was also sending them like research papers on like, uh, Asian immigrant parents and like the trajectory of their like child's like lives and career paths. Like I was trying to send them in every which way, you know, um, what I wanted to do and they just weren't listening. So it was hard. It was really hard because when I dropped out of OCHEM, like it broke our relationship. And then when I moved to Boston to try to become a fashion buyer, cause it was the closest thing I could get to fashion without having a design degree, they were like, so when are you going to go back to school and get your master's, your PhD, whatever? Like they just were not having it. And so, um, I kept pushing and believing in myself because if, you know, if your own family is not going to believe in you. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs go through this too. You just have to put your blinders on and just keep going and believe in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I had to do that too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to go against your immigrant parents. But you have to, otherwise it's a life of misery. You know, and now that I'm older, I do understand that all they wanted for me was financial security. Mm -hmm. Like, look, my mom came over on a boat, no food or water for seven days, like came from nothing. Um, So I get it. But at the cost of squashing someone's potential, that wasn't their intention. I get it. But Mm -hmm. had I not been strong enough, maybe I would have gotten into that medical career path and just done then that would have been fine but my soul would have died Mm -hmm. yeah yeah they don't know any better they don't they They just all they know is what they know Mm -hmm. and that's it and um anything outside of that traditional path is just too scary for them and they can't bear it right um holidays were probably really hard huh uh, I don't even remember anymore. I think one time, oh, you know what? I remember when they asked me to come home for a holiday and I, I had to keep pretending that I didn't quit my job in Boston and like pretended that like I couldn't come home because of work or something. I mean, it was, it was a really messy time. Yeah. Yeah. And so did things ever get repaired? Things are better now. Um, I think they're proud of me, but there's always that Asian immigrant parent side that's always like, well, how much did you make? Is it more than last time? Like, uh, what about this? And my mom is the queen of how much, how much, how much. And so that, I don't know. And I think it's just ingrained in them. That has not been fun for our relationship. Mm. Um, Yeah. So it's still hard in many ways, even though like I've I think I've reached a level of success that should make them happy, but somehow it's just never enough. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, Yeah. 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 I think uh, I know exactly what you're saying. I think it's really hard because they're not like from my parents, they got to see me on TV Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so did everyone else. So that Mm kind of shut everybody down. Mm. 
-hmm. at some point. It's different in the digital world. Mm -hmm. And it's different because they don't know how to measure your success. Right. So that's why your mom's asking how much. She's just trying to measure your success so she can brag about you to people and say, look, no, Cassie's a success. Right. Right. Um, And so, you know, it's it's really, really hard when you want to do something that the measuring system is a little more challenging Mm. for parents to see. It's like why anybody who wants to be in this industry and the entertainment industry and wants to be on crew, how do you measure the success of a lighting director? Right. But like, we can't live without a lighting director. Right. Lighting director is so important. (laughs) So important. And if that's your passion and now you're the greatest lighting director, Mm -hmm. how do you explain that to your parents? Right. (laughs) Right. Right. It's hard. There are a lot of people who suffer the pains of their family members or, you know, the people that they love and want, you know, to feel important to, or have, you know, have them have a high opinion of you and your success that can't really share it. Um, for you, it's just the beginning because you mm-hmm. you will be on camera more. I mean, that's how we met. We met yeah. online with Kelly. I'm we sure did. Your, your parents probably saw that. They they did see that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I think it'll be a little bit more of a journey. And I think, you know, um, I mean, my dad was super stubborn. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. It was super painful. Holidays mm-hmm. suck. That's why I asked about holidays because mm-hmm. I know they were like cry fest for me and Kevin. We were just <sighs> like, just like cuddle together and just be shaking and like be with our dogs. And that was it. It was a really brutal time. Oh yeah. Any, I mean, even today holidays are still hard. Mm -hmm. It just like, it's weird. Yeah. Yep. But Sam's family is really nice. So, and they're always proud. So that's fun. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's the key, right? Is you have to find the people that are going to help fill those cups for you. And mm. sometimes you're not going to get it from the people you want it from. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. you're going to have to wait a little longer to get it. Um, sometimes people never get it. You yeah. know, someone passes and they never get it. Right. Um, so you can't live your life um, begging for people to to get it and to f- give you what you need. You have to give you yourself what you need. 100%. And and find it somehow, some way. Mm-hmm. Um, and not expect it from someone who's not going to give it to you because that's going to bring the pain. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's a lot. All right, guys. Uh, I'm obviously in a different outfit. And that is because we decided to break this interview up into two parts. There was so much good info in here. We went really, really long. And so we're going to break it up for you. So that was part one. I hope you enjoyed it. Part two is even better. Not just saying it. Um, You guys are going to really enjoy this part. I hope you're already enjoying it. Stay tuned tomorrow. Part two.